So yeah, storehouse and first well. That's pretty cool. Let's get up a little closer. So that's this area here. Now, and I don't know if they're going to reconstruct this one, but that's pretty much what they're... I don't they're, think they will, because uh, as you can see, it looks like they dug down like... Well, you have yeah, to. 20 foot or so. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So, oh, I want to show you guys this, because this is cool. This is a scale model of James Fort. Uh, yeah, circa 1607 to 1611, based on the archaeological remains that we found here. Exactly, um, and so eventually it became five, but right now it's only three. So this is what some of the project. Well, there's the fort, which is right on the water. Yep, that's where we're at. And then you have these other little buildings through here. Isn't that the church, though? No. It's not the church? Not the church. But the hmm. interesting thing is, if you take a look, these cannons right here were pulled off the ship to give them support. That's what they did. That's how they had their cannons. Let's see. Um, lost James Fort. Mid-19th century extensive erosion on the western side of Jamestown Island led many to conclude that the site of the original 1607 James Fort had been claimed by the river, James River. In 1893, the Association of the Preservation of Virginia Antiquities acquired the 22 and a half acres, which we saw that earlier somewhere, uh, and um, of high ground surrounding the brick, ch brick church tower, which I was just in. Uh, only stand in 17th century structure remains. Um, you could be so, right, man. Maybe that is the church. Yeah. Yeah. But it was also served as a main entry. All right, kid. I think that is where it's at. So those would be um, living quarters and such. And yeah, that is the church that we were just in. And that building next to it, I assume, is that right there. Which and would if you be... look carefully, you see the little crosses on the map? These are oh, grave yeah. sites that they found. Grave sites. And there's another one right behind and here. And actually, we're going to go see some grave sites in just a moment. Um, yeah, you've got a grave site behind this building right here. Yeah, quite a few of them. And then in front, and then to the back. Quite well, a few behind that. Where they are. Okay, and so here oh, is some of the. Uh... Oh, there's another ferry. Hey, honey, we could take the ferry. There's one going in and one going out. <laughs> cool. Um, so these aren't literally going to have anything written on them. There's no. just uh, a placard over here. To indicate um, what's going on over here, you got bags on you, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can bring your dogs here with you, just so you're aware. Just make sure that you have um, uh, and as you can see, here's baggies some of the and stuff. Foundation areas. Yeah, this is some of the original oof, foundation. A lot of the brick. Um, I guess the things that were still able to be found and halfway decent so yeah these are all grave sites that they had found doing this dig i'm gonna go read the sign over yeah, here yeah sure go ahead i'm gonna run it first yeah it is the cafe huh you want me to go do it now um yeah oh. all right i'll make my way i'll be my way back 1607 burials well Revealed over 30 grave shafts located beneath the remnants of the circa 1611 Councilor's Row building. Um, the graves predated the construction of that structure. First year was harsh. Out of the original 104 settlers, only 38 survived. Um, Virginia Company instructions mandated that the dead and sick be concealed from the Indians. 
a possible reason for the burial ground being located here inside the fort. A few of these burials have been investigated. The archaeological team uses forensic chemistry and history of work towards an identification of the first settlers. Archaeologists can identify the age, the sex, origin of the remains. All the clues, along with the location of the burial within the fort, confirmed to be the first burial ground of 1607. So there's the actual, some of the bones that you see. And here's names. And as you see, most of them died in August and September, 1607. Um, this one right here, believe that this young man, um, they believe he was killed by the Virginia Indians. Forensic evidence erupting third molars, his wisdom teeth, suggesting this individual is about 15 years old. Um, the isotopic chemical signatures identify him as an Englishman. History records that on May 25th, 1607, a boy was slain in an attack on the fort. And they believe it was due to an arrowhead because they actually found it in his uh, leg there, his femur. So, pretty interesting. And how do you like how this is put together here? Pretty cool. Eighteen sixty one Fort Pocahontas. Another archaeological site. There's a well over here we're going to look at in just a moment. Right here. A well. Wow. See water in there right now. But they got it all locked up this well, so you can't even do anything with it. Um, let's see. So this we're coming up to is called the Hunt Shrine. But I bet they I bet they knew about that. Hard to really see. I can barely read it, so I know you can barely read it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It's a shrine. Um, it looks like there's another well over there. Alright, I'm gonna go sit over here in the shade. Ricky's going to be out in a few moments getting us something to drink from the little cafe they have over here. 